Everyone want a ride? I'm a carrier, baby. Oxford Circus Station, please. Let's go. The exotic xenomorph season continues. In this video, we'll explore the carrier alien. Look at all those lazy facehuggers hitching a ride like a fat person uses a mobility scooter. Hey, get off your asses and do some work. Some facehugging. That's your job, right? Apparently, carriers are one possible final evolution stage of a Praetorian, and the second most intensive of the three. The others being the Queen and the Ravager as possible final stages. Carriers appear in the video game Aliens vs Predator Extinction. The carrier spreads the Xeno infestation to outlying regions by serving as a facehugger transport. While riding a carrier, facehuggers do not expend energy, enabling them to reach more distant areas than their limited energy supply would otherwise allow. While I never knew facehuggers were lacking in energy, but this is what the AVP wiki states. Definitely not canon. Anyway, let's carry on. The carrier is an extraordinarily dangerous enemy, since its cargo does not hesitate to leap on nearby targets when threatened. Like all purebreed aliens, the carrier comes from a morphed Praetorian. The carrier resembles an outsized drone, standing roughly the same height as the Queen, or its sibling cast, the Ravager. It's a bit more durable than the Ravager, and is able to withstand as much punishment as a warrior. Coloured brownish-grey tones, it's considerably less armoured than those other two variations. This combat isn't really its niche in the hive. It has specially evolved backspines designed to hold the vulnerable facehugger, offering them protection, nutrients called exoadrenaline, and transportation to areas on the map they wouldn't be able to reach on their own. So they're basically repeating the same info again here. Facehuggers can leap upon a carrier at will or be called. Anyone want a ride? I'm a carrier, baby. Although a fence isn't their strong suit, the carrier is anything but defenseless. Its arms terminate into sharp, hook-like scythes, which it uses to slash its victims. If the enemy is organic, any facehuggers it may be harboring will incapacitate and kill them before the fight truly begins. Right, so the facehugger is gonna kill people. Yeah, haven't seen that before. I don't know who contributed to this article, but writing is not one of your talents, pal. Okay, now onto the super carrier. When upgraded, carriers develop the ability to hold 12 facehuggers instead of just six. Upon death, their bodies explode apart, showering enemies with acid and deadly facehuggers. Physically, carriers develop several markings along the dome of their heads, similar to an upgraded queen or praetorian. They also grow brownish chitinous pads on their shoulders, offering a light boost in armor. Trivia. Despite having developed from a Praetorian, the carrier's cranium is more similar to that of a drone, instead of the broad-crested Praetorian. How informative. If you want my opinion, I find the idea of a carrier alien kind of ridiculous. Facehuggers can crawl along walls and ceilings, and they certainly don't need help from some oversized bloated Xeno to take them places. But I never considered the idea of facehuggers needing to conserve energy. In the movies, they do die pretty soon after impregnation, so maybe there is some truth to this theory, even in the canon universe. The facehuggers don't eat, they have no mouth to eat with, so it makes sense that they would only live a couple of days after exiting the egg. Sick and dying facehuggers could take a ride on the back of the carrier, and then with one last burst of energy, spring on a possible host. So okay, I am gonna change my mind. Maybe the carrier Xeno does make sense in some ways. Oh, and random insertion, I made a beat called Prom Queen. Yes, I make music in my free time. Please subscribe to Viral Killer Music. It's not just about music production. I'll also place my personal vlogs on that channel. So check it out. I'll leave you with this beat. <laughs> 